Hello there, it's Austin. I recently got a chance to drive over to the West Coast, and along the way, I stopped and tried out some cream ales. I really fell in love with the style, and decided to try my hand at my own West Coast style cream ale. So let's get started. We'll start by gathering our full volume of water, which is right about 4.8 gallons of reverse osmosis filtered water. We'll be adjusting this water to give us a slightly softer mouthfeel, which means it's low overall in mineral additions, but with a little bit extra calcium chloride. The backbone of our malt bill today is gonna to be just over 80% of pale two row. For the specialty additions, I'm adding a little bit of flaked corn, as well as some flaked oats. This will contribute to a lighter body and a slightly creamier mouthfeel, as well as giving us a bump in sweetness and hopefully helping out a little bit with head retention. With all of our grains milled, I'm going to almost pour it into the kettle directly before remembering to add the grain basket in and finally actually pouring the grains into the kettle for our mash step. Today we're mashing at 150 degrees for 60 minutes. That's a degree higher than I normally mash, which certainly doesn't make too much of a difference, but I like to imagine it contributes a tiny bit of sweetness that is non-fermentable in the end product. With the mash concluded and our grains rinsed thoroughly, it's time to clean up a tiny bit before setting our kettle to boil. With the kettle heating up, I'll add a little bit of foam inhibitor to make sure we don't make too much of a mess. Then it's time to sit back and enjoy a pretty standard 60 minute boil process. During this boil, I'll be adding two charges of Willamette hops. These hops are contributing a little bit of earthy and a little bit of floral, but mainly they're contributing a lack of intensity, because generally I'm not looking for a ton of hop flavor out of my cream ale. With everything but the yeast loaded up into our solution, it's time to chill down the wort. I'm aiming for a room temperature fermentation on this beer, so just trying to get the wort down to about 70 degrees. I'll be fermenting this cream ale under pressure in a five gallon torpedo keg. I modified the dip tube by cutting it off a little short, but for this first batch, that's pretty much all the modifications I'll make. After verifying our starting gravity, it's time to pitch our yeast. I'm using Y Yeast's 2112 California Lager to complete the West Coast inspiration behind this brew. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be fermenting this cream ale in a keg, and the main reason for doing so is so that I can attach a spunding valve. This allows the beer to carbonate while fermenting, as well as suppresses some off flavors that might be present from a lager yeast functioning in slightly higher room temperatures. I'm using a ball lock spunding valve from Keg King and setting it between 12 and 15 PSI for the entire fermentation. Due to the fermentation being under pressure, it's a little bit harder to keep track of, so I let it go a little longer than usual, about 14 days at room temperature, before dropping the entire thing into my kegerator for a cold crash. I left the spunding valve on for this, which wasn't super necessary, but wanted to to see how much the pressure actually dropped. Finally, it's time to transfer from the spunding keg over to our two and a half gallon serving keg, let it condition for an additional couple weeks, and then it's time to enjoy. Cream ale is a style that I've really been enjoying recently. It's very lager-like, which I'm obviously a fan of, I'm not sure if there's a consensus on whether or not it's supposed to be creamy, maybe because the ale yeast rose to the top, that was where the name came from. I've even seen some people say that it was just whatever brewery popularized its best-selling beer or their cream of the crop. Naming quirks aside, I really enjoy how crisp and easy to drink this beer is. It's got a really good color and decent clarity, but head retention isn't too great. A touch of bitterness, but nothing too overwhelming as far as the hop goes and also a little bit of sweetness on the nose and on the tip of the tongue. I really like that the recipe uses corn. I think that's an underrated ingredient that kind of gets pushed to the side a little bit as a mass market ingredient, but I really think it has a lot to offer in terms of being a really American ingredient to add to beer. Also, first time fermenting under pressure, um, I'm not detecting any off flavors that I would suspect out of a lager yeast fermented at higher temperatures, but at the same time, this is kind of a lager ale hybrid yeast, so more research needed on that. Overall, a nice, mild, refreshing beer that's pretty good to look at. Definitely would add this to my list of everyday beers. Cheers! Cheers.